Welcome to Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast. Can AI be named as an inventor on a patent application? Some countries are signaling that they want to grant patents to inventors or where grant patents to inventions generated by AI, but the United States is not one of them. Today, we are talking about legal updates to AI and the law. I'm your host, Wayne Carroll, and I'm excited to bring you insights and stories from the success and failures of others and teach you how to win at the game of intellectual property. I always start with a disclaimer. This podcast is for educational and informational purposes only. I am not providing legal advice. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as creating an attorney-client relationship. So there is a project called the Artificial Inventor Project, where a group of attorneys and professors from around the world have joined together to test artificial intelligence cases in patent law and other intellectual property, primarily patents and copyrights. Today, we're going to focus on the patents. Patent applications have been filed. The first one to make it all the way through the system, final appeals, Supreme Court, that was the United States. And the Supreme Court in the United States said, no, nope, we're not going to let an AI be an inventor on a patent. And we don't allow any patents without an inventor. So if the AI is the only inventor, too bad. There's no, no patent rights for you. They've taken this to a whole bunch of countries around the world. We currently have appeals pending in the United Kingdom, Europe, Germany, Israel, Republic of Korea, Japan, New Zealand. Those are really some of the biggest patent offices around the world. Oh, and the other one is South Africa. It's actually an issued patent. Now, South Africa, they call themselves a registration system where you deposit or register your patent, and then it can be challenged later. It's a, it has less assurance that you've got a strong patent, but often what happens with South Africa is um, someone will get a patent approved in a different country first, and then file that patent or amend the one they have pending in South Africa to that one. So they've it's gone through a review process oftentimes in another country. That can still be challenged in South Africa, but it is a granted patent. So South Africa is the first one to say, yes, we've got an AI as an inventor and it has a patent. The United States is the first one to say, no. The UK has a pending application going on. It's been through the Court of Appeals. The Supreme Court in the UK has heard the arguments but hasn't released their final statement. Now, in the Court of Appeals, there were three justices that voted or, or put their opinion in. The first one wrote a very lengthy and detailed and strongly worded opinion, but he was the one who said yes, and the other two said no. So the ruling from the Court of Appeals was no because he lost two to three. Uh, one said yes, two said no. So we are awaiting the Supreme Court in the UK to find out if they say yes. Now, the question was posed to the intellectual property office in the UK to see if they wanted to change anything or if there was anything that they wanted to give an opinion on. And basically they said, it's too early. We don't know how everything's going to shake out. AI is very young. We're not sure how. If we made a clear signal to say, hey, come here and file patents, what kind of effect that's going to have on the market, they're worried about, will there be unintended consequences? So they basically would say, let's see how it works out somewhere else. So we don't know what their Supreme Court will say. It sounds like it's going to be no for now and stay tuned. Germany is pending. They initially rejected based on technical issues in that uh, the AI can be the creator, 
or the inventor, but a natural person must also be named as an inventor. Right now, their decision is, is more on a technical basis. And some of these come down to they're focused on, well, you have to fill out the form and will the form allow it? Um, sometimes it looks like that. But then as they appeal it, they, they get deeper into what does the law actually say? So we've covered, oh, Israel at this point has, they say we won't accept the patent application. So that sounds like it's a final word as well. And, but it didn't go all the way through a, through a Supreme Court appeal. And so there is a website um, called Artificial, or the URL is artificialinventor.com. So you can look at all these yourself. I've read a few other articles. Uh, let me explain real quickly how international patent applications work. You can only get a, a patent in one country at a time. Of course, that's uh, in the process of changing for the European Union, they are um, in the process of creating a patent system that covers all 27, I think that's the number, of the European Union states. There's a, a treaty with the vast majority of countries around the world. There's only a few really that aren't involved in this that says, if you file a patent application in one of these countries, and then within one year of filing that application, you start, you can either file into each of these countries at that point, or you can start a process that gives you more time to file into, into each of these countries. But you still need to get a patent approved in each country. Each country has different laws, different rules. The UK appeals court recognized that the United States and some other courts had already given an opinion on the patentability, but they said our law is different. We have to analyze it based on our law. So that's that's really how it works with, there is no international patent other than there's a European Union patent, but that's basically treating the European Union as a single entity with separate states in it, like the United States has so for patent purposes. And the, um, so the, we have lots of appeals pending and in one of them, the, let's see, in, in one of them, they said, well, you have to reapply. You can be named as the inventor, even though the AI created it. And, um, uh, I believe that's Germany. So they are, let's see, no, that's, that's Europe. They're basically reapplying. Um, you can't really reapply, but what you can do is file a new application that is linked to the old application. It's called a divisional application or a continuation application in different countries. So they've got a new application that is applying slightly differently and they're, they're going to test that. Um, so the generally how the law has been and specifically in the, in the United States, um, inventors are the default owners of patents. And then for a company to get the rights, the inventor has to assign those rights to the company. Usually that's already taken care of with a, an agreement with your inventors that are employed by a company. Um, they agree to assign. And then when they um, get to, if, if they need to sign an actual assignment, they'll do that. The U S said, since an AI can't be an inventor, it can't assign rights to a company. So it, it doesn't work under our system. So that's, that's where that's at. Things are expected to shake out. Um, it appears that um, it appears that Australia has given a green light and things are moving forward there. And to, of course, you can go to the Artificial Inventor Project. They 
occasionally post updates and um but you might have to uh, their updates aren't necessarily as often as other reporting updates that's what's going on with with ai invented patents and what will be interesting to see is if if there's a country that gives a clear green light and whether there's a flood of applicants uh, so an applicant can be different in a lot of countries than the inventor even even in the united states but in the united states if an applicant isn't the inventor you have to state that the rights have been assigned um, and submit documents to show that the cutting edge of what's going on in patent law with artificial intelligence and I'd love to hear your opinion. What do you think? If an artificial intelligence comes up with a great idea that is going to help people, should the company who worked with that artificial intelligence, should it be like an employee relationship where the company employed that artificial intelligence and we should treat the company basically as the inventor? In some countries, that is how they uh, treat a, a patent application. And so in some countries, it appears you might be able to have a patent application with no inventor if an inventor has to be a natural person. But you can still have an applicant and they can get exclusive rights to an idea. Um, some of the issues around this are questions that haven't been answered, like, does do we need the incentive of artificial intelligence or the incentive of patents to for artificial intelligence inventions to encourage them to come forward or will they come forward anyway and we should let the market just you know let people fight over it so these are some of the questions that are are getting ready to play out and um We'll have to stay tuned to see what happens. I'm Wayne Carroll, and this is Leveraging Inspiration.